To configure the cache journal, we navigate to transaction code SPRO, subreference IMG, and then under financial accounting, bank accounting, business transactions, cash journal, we can find all the necessary customizing steps. We will now start with the first one and then go further down in the list. So first of all, we need to create a GL account for the cash journal. Let's click on this one. So in my case, I already created the GL account. It's called Petty Cash. It's for sure a balance sheet account and it belongs to the account group of the general ledger accounts. So first of all, you would need to create such a GL account. In the control data, I just stored the currency amount and the sort key. And for the create bank interest tab, I just inserted the field status group, which is mandatory. If you want to find out more about field status groups, then you can watch my other video. I will link it in the video description. Going back, once we set up the GL account for the cash journal, we can define amount limits. Let's click on this one. So for the cash journal, we can define limit values. And when those limit values are reached or exceeded, the system will display an information pop-up for the user. So let's click on new entries, provide our company code, the currency, let's say euro, the validity date and the amount, let's say 1000. So this now means that for the company code 1000 and the currency euro, only values of up until 1000 euro can be posted. Now we could include here more company codes or we could even leave the company code out, just say euro, the validity and then the amount, let's say 1500. And this would now mean that for the company code 1000, the amount 1000 will apply and for all the other company codes, the maximum amount of 1500 will apply and so on. Let's save this one, go back. Now the next step would be to define document types for the cash journal documents. Let's inspect this one. Here we can already see all the standard document types available in the system. We could create new ones via new entries, but as of now, this should be sufficient. So you don't really have to do anything here. If you want to find out more about document types, I will also link you one video of mine in the description of this one. So this looks fine. Let's go back. Then we have here define number range intervals for the cash journal documents. Let's click on this one. We need to insert a company code and then we can inspect the intervals. So for your reference, the cash journal itself is a sub ledger to the general ledger. So we need to store a separate number range for the documents created in the sub ledger. This is why we need a number range. And as you can see here, mine is internal. So the first document will receive the number 100 million and so on. Going back and back again, you can see here two more customizing steps, define numbering groups for cash journal and define number range for numbering groups. So both of them are used if we want our cash journal documents to be numbered differently. So say we have, for instance, expenses, then we want documents created for expenses in a separate number range then documents created for revenues within the cash journal. And this is why we could say here, for instance, define numbering groups or cash journal. This is nothing else than a key in the description. Let's just say for instance, EXP for expenses. And then we have REV for revenues. Let's save this one. Going back, we can now define the number range for each of the numbering groups. So let's select our group expenses and define an interval Let's say this is number range number zero one. The year is here independent. And then let's say from 1 million up until nearly 2 million. Save this one. And now let's do the same for our revenue. Let's say number range zero two. And here we say from 3 million up until nearly 4 million. That's it. Going back, we can now click on set up cash journal. And here you can already see a bunch of cash journals existing in my system. Let's now create a new one from scratch. So what we will do is we will take an existing one and then we will say copy as. We can take the same company code, this is fine. So we can have multiple cash journals per company code, but then we need to define a new number for the new cash journal. So let's say 0002. We can use the same GL account, this is fine. So this is the one we defined before. We have our currency of the cash journal. Then we have here an indicator if this cash journal is closed. So if we would set this indicator, we could no longer post to this cash journal. But as we are creating a new one, I won't set it for now. And then you can see a lot of columns starting with D. Let's actually expand the view. So first of all, you can see here the document type for the GL account posting. It's set to AB. So as you have seen before in the SAP standard, there are a bunch of document types and AB, for instance, is for a classical journal entry. So this is fine. Then we have here another column called document type for 
disbursements. So here we can define which document type the cash book would use. For cash disbursements offset to GL accounts. We can also set document types for payments to vendors or from vendors. In this case here it's KZ which stands for vendor payment and the same can also be done for the customer side. Then we have here the cash payment group and the cash receipt group. So those are the groups we defined before. As said, we can distinguish our documents by those groups. So saying that we have a cash payment, we can here include our expense group that we created and for the receipt, we include our revenue. So what would happen then is if we post revenues to the cash journal, the documents will be recorded with a different number range compared to the case where we post expenses. Then over here we have even one more column where we could also include another group. We did not define it yet, but we could do so. And this would be a group for check receipts where the documents will then be stored with a different number range than the cash receipts and the payments. Let's go to the right. We have some more indicators. Then we have here one more column called check split. So this indicator specifies whether the line items of the total posting are split for a check deposit. And we have three options here, no split of line items of total documents. So the items of the total posting are not split. Or we could say all items of total documents split. So this would mean that when several checks are deposited in our cash journal, the posting item with the cash journal account and the offsetting item of the totals posting are split. Or we could say here offsetting item of total documents split, then only the offsetting item of the total posting is to be split. Then we have the cash journal name, let's say Petty Cash 2 for instance. We could even assign an authorization group to restrict access to this cash journal. Then we could say here that substitution is allowed in our cash journal so that financial substitutions can be carried out when entries are made in the cash journal. Then we have here an indicator called simultaneous cash journals access permitted. So if we set this indicator, two users can access the cash journal at the same time. And here we could specify also important persons for the cash journal and also store additional text. Let's click now on copy. Here we get the warning message that we need to ensure that for the account 100,000, this is our cash journal account that we defined back then, we can only post automatically to. This is fine. So we hit on enter, continue, and then we can save. And that's basically it. So let's go back again. We only have two customizing steps left. Maintain business transactions. Let's click on this one. And here we need to maintain the business transactions for our cash journal. So for instance, we need to insert the company code. Then you can see here the transaction number. This is filled automatically by the system. So we can't do anything over here. And then you can see business transaction type. Let me actually open this one. And here you can see we have six different business transactions. So a receipt from bank account, a payment to a bank account, revenue expense, as well as customer or vendor posting. So we always need to select one of them. Then you can see special GL indicator. So this is relevant for customer or vendor accounts and for all the line items in the customer and vendor accounts that are updated to an alternative reconciliation account, the special GL indicator would determine which account is to be selected as the alternative reconciliation account. Then we have the business transaction classification. Let's open this one. And with the classification of cash journal business transactions, we can define in addition whether a business transaction code is only relevant for cash payments, cash receipts, check receipts and cash or check receipts. Then we have here the GL account, which is either an expense or revenue account for the offsetting posting of the GL account postings. But please be cautious that for the business transactions K and D, we do not insert a GL account as you can see over here in this examples. This is because the customer and vendor account will be determined during the transaction. Then there's the indicator called tax code or to be precise, the tax on sales and purchases code. This indicator can only be set for expenses and revenues. As you can see here on the business transaction category E, for instance, we can see a tax code. The same also counts for R, but not for the others. And this indicator represents a tax category that has to be considered for tax reporting to the tax authorities. Then we have a description of the cash journal business transaction like office supplies, payments to banks and so on. And then three more indicators, business transaction block. This would indicate that a business transaction is blocked for additional postings. So we can't post anymore. The account modifiable during document entry indicator, meaning that we can change the GL account during the document entry. 
if we set this indicator. So I'm talking about the GL account over here. And by the way, we are not forced to insert a GL account as you know, but if we don't do so, then we need to insert it during the transaction itself. And as you know, for the blank entries over here, the reconciliation account will be picked. And then we have here the tax code modifiable indicator. So this means that we are allowed to change the tax code during the document entry. So this is again the same. We defined here a tax code already, but this is only default value. If we do not define a tax code over here, then we need to insert a tax code during the document entry. And this indicator over here can be set for the categories expense and revenue and also for down payments. And then we can store here long text. As our company code is already inserted, I will leave it as is for now. But you can create new entries via new entries or always by selecting the entry and clicking on the copy as button. Last but not least, let's go back. We have to set up print parameters for the cash journal. So let's click on this one. To be able to print receipts, we need to set up the print parameters for our cash journal. So first of all, we need to insert our company code and then we have the cash journal print program. So this here is the standard program which is able to print our cash journal receipts. Then we have the report variant. So this variant we define once we access the program the first time. Then we have the correspondence. So the actual form for the printing receipts is found via this correspondence tab here. So let's open this one. You can see for instance, ZAP18 would be for a cash document. We also have a bunch of others. Then the form ID column over here is for identifying a form even more precisely. And then you can see here we have two check marks, PDF form. So if we select this one, when printing a check lot in the cash journal, a PDF form is used, but this is only valid for certain countries. And we have the accounting document indicator. So if we set this indicator, only documents that have been posted in the general ledger are printed. And these documents will contain the information that exists in a general ledger. But if we do not select this one, all of the documents saved in the cash journal are also printed. And these will contain the cash journal information and not the general ledger information. Yeah, and that's basically it. I hope you liked this more extensive video. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.